The 2022 Atlantic hurricane season is less than 100 days away and could even kickstart sooner than we think. As of now, the likelihood is increasing for us to see an above average hurricane season, which simply means more storms than normal and some sources have already given early predictions and are expecting an active season. However, what is the reason behind this consensus? It all goes down to a phenomenon known as the ENSO or El Nino Southern Oscillation. But what on earth is that occurrence? I will break it down as best as possible for you and later in this video, we will take a look at the total number of tropical storms, hurricanes and major hurricanes that are already anticipated and I will also give my take on this. However, before I delve into details, Okay, so what exactly is the El Nino Southern Oscillation? Well, it is a region in the Pacific Ocean Basin. It has three phases, namely the El Nino phase, La Nina phase, and neutral phase. You might be familiar with the El Nino or La Nina, and some people even think that either is a big storm that happens. They aren't storms, but they do influence the hurricane season very greatly. Let's understand how each phase works. Up first, the El Nino. But very quickly, I want you to imagine a scenario that will hopefully aid in you better understanding the Enso. So think of being outside on a hot, tranquil day. If you're standing outside for a long time, your body temperature increases and that is the reason you sweat. Now, think of going outside on a day as sunny but also pretty windy. You'll notice that you'd be cooler on that day compared to the day that isn't windy. That is because the wind is removing that warmth from you and replacing it with cooler air, so keep that in mind. Now let's apply this to the Eastern Pacific Basin. There are winds that are constantly blowing around Earth. The trade winds are one such kind that blow from east to west but at times they are stronger than normal and at others they're weaker than normal. Now, imagine that highlighted area that you're seeing in the tropical Pacific, nice and warm. The trades are blowing but they're not so strong at all so the sea surface temperatures increase because nothing is interfering just as with the aforementioned scenario of being outside on a tranquil sunny day causing you to feel hotter and begin sweating. The ocean isn't sweating of course but we do have warmer than normal temperatures in that region. If you've been subscribed for quite some time, you might have heard me reiterating that tropical cyclones depend on warmth and moisture. Therefore, from all this, we can conclude that we will likely have lots of tropical cyclone activity occurring in the Eastern Pacific Basin. But what about the Atlantic? I mean, you clicked on this video to hear about the Atlantic and I'm here talking about the Pacific, but don't worry, we're going to that right now. The increase in all the activity in the Eastern Pacific will influence the Atlantic such as increasing vertical wind shear. Think of it as a big inhibiting factor for tropical cyclones. It pretty much disrupts thunderstorm activity, significantly reducing the number of storms that develop in the basin. A good example is the 2014 seasons. The Pacific hurricane season saw 22 named storms, a whopping total of 16 hurricanes and 9 major hurricanes. Meanwhile in the Atlantic, the development of an El Nino was expected and things were pretty below average with the season producing just 8 named storms, 6 hurricanes and 2 major hurricanes. So if you're a person that strongly despises hurricanes, you can definitely feel relaxed during an El Nino, but definitely not a La Nina season over in the Atlantic. A La Nina is basically the opposite of an El Nino. The trades in the Pacific are much stronger, disrupting that heat concentration of warm ocean surface temperatures and replacing it with much cooler temperatures. This reduces tropical cyclone activity over in the Pacific and now the Atlantic Basin has time to brew some very major storms because there is a decrease in vertical shear which means less thunderstorm interferences. 
there is also greater instability in the atmosphere, which is when we have a lot going on. Up next, we have the neutral phase of the ENSO, which is when everything is pretty much normal or average. So temperatures aren't warmer than normal or cooler than normal, so we're basically in between both, but it is also a transition, either before La Nina or in El Nino. Note that a neutral ENSO doesn't mean things are quiet in the Atlantic, because there can be as much as 14 named storms, and remember, it takes only one to cause major destruction. As of now, the likelihood of a weak La Nina or a neutral ENSO is increasing. With La Nina, we can anticipate more tropical cyclone activity than normal. We already have early preseason predictions that are out. The TSR or Tropical Storm Risk is expecting a total of 18 named storms, 8 hurricanes and 3 major hurricanes. If you're not too keen on what a major hurricane is, it is basically a hurricane with winds over 110 miles per hour or simply category 3 or higher. Next, we have the Colorado State University calling for a range of potentially 13 to 16 named storms, 6 to 8 hurricanes, and 2 to 3 major hurricanes. Even though these predictions are out, there are large uncertainties because we are still pretty far from the hurricane season. I mean, it's just late February, but for the past few years, we have seen so much activity, especially in 2020, which is currently the most active season in recorded history. Last year in 2021 was also very active producing 21 named storms exhausting the designated list and we could be up for yet another round of storms. Something important to note as well is that even though uncertainties loom, chances are increasing for us to see an active season, not decreasing. And as for my numbers, as of right now, I'm anticipating between 15 and 19 named storms, 7 to 10 hurricanes, and 3 to 5 major hurricanes. Again, I'm reiterating that there are uncertainties and things are expected to change. And as we get closer to the start of the hurricane season, we will have lots more predictions out, especially from our best meteorological sources, including the iconic NOAA or National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration. Regardless of what will happen throughout the upcoming season, it's never too early to begin preparations because it is always better to be safe than sorry. As time progresses, I will keep you updated as more information and details surrounding the hurricane season are released. And so, I hope that in this video you learned something new and better understand how the ENSO works if things weren't so transparent before. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to tap that like button and share with a friend who might not be aware of what's going on and what's expected. You can also share your thoughts or questions in the comments below and as per usual, always be with wise.